Hi, I'm Jennifer Curry, and I want to welcome you to the Creative Souls series, where we're gathering together a space with creative souls to support you in committing to your creativity, getting into action, and healing the blocks that have been holding you back. And today, I am so excited to introduce you to Louise Gale. Louise is a British mixed media artist and author of the book Botanical Mandalas. She creates in her art studio, which is on the south coast of Spain, overlooking the sea, tiny fishing boats, and the Moroccan coastline in the distance. Louise loves to combine the healing power of nature with the meditative process of mandala creating, which result in her beautiful botanical mandala designs. And I am really happy to get to talk to you today, Louise. Welcome. Thank you so oh. much for being here. Oh, thank you so much for the invitation. I'm really excited. I'm really excited. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, I would love for you to just start by telling us a little bit about your creative journey and, and have you always been an artist or did you do something else and sort of come into this later? Um, give us a little bit of your story. That, that's always so interesting. It's like, it's like a whole patchwork of uh, <laughs> interesting twists and turns, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I believe we're all, we're all artists inside. I really do believe that. We're all creative inside. And I think, um, you know, as a, young, as a young child, I had creative parents. So we were always encouraged to be creative. So we would do, you know, we'd paint our own, like, holiday decorations. Um, we'd paint tents in the garden and sleep out in the garden in them. Um, I'd always be painting and drawing. I'd always be in nature, you know, collecting kind of um, flowers and things to draw or press. Um, so, yeah, so I started off like, you know, as, with a real creative kind of beginning. And I did go to art school when I was 16. Um, but actually, uh, my art teacher, when I was at high school, my art teacher told me I would never get into art school. So that was, yeah, that was something that was kind of like interesting um obstacle i guess at, at my at the early age of uh, 15 i think it was but my good old mum she said don't listen to her <laughs> way to so, go uh, mom yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so she said no and she said it doesn't matter if you don't get in you can still be creative and you can still be an artist so um i did get into art school so i studied kind of art and design for a couple of years and then i went off and studied ceramic design um and a lot around surface pattern design and i think that's where kind of my, my a lot of my artwork kind of has a very pattern feel about it. So I think that's kind of where that's come from. I love looking and seeing kind of patterns in nature and, and all around me as well. And then after that, I think um, I didn't, I wasn't after art school. I kind of went up, went and got a job. <laughs> mm -hmm. I went and got a job in London and I became a buyer for a store. And um, I was creative in my spare time, but I guess it wasn't really until my mid thirties, I really craved more and more creativity in my life. And I was in a corporate job in New York, actually, in a win I like to say in a windowless office, it wasn't a very pleasant place. And um, I really craved that creativity and I found a way to be more creative every day mm -hmm. outside of my work time. And um, eventually I just found the courage to, to leave that corporate job and be, be more creative full time. Wow. What were you doing? Like, what was sort of that, like in that particular period of your life, what was the, what were your creative outlets? Like, were you doing the same kind of stuff that you do now? Or was it, was it different back then? Like, what was well, the sort of romance that kind of pulled you into? Oh, right. Well, when I was in my, when I was in my thirties. Yeah. Like, you know, there, I, somebody was talking the other day about there being kind of rom a romancing period, like when you kind of rediscover that your art is really important to you. And that's kind of what it sounds like to me that that was your experience a little bit. Yeah, I think it's, you know, I think it's that kind of feeling where, you know, I was, I, it was okay being in my job, but I kind of, I really felt like there was something missing. And I think because I had that creativity for so many years when I was younger and I did dip in and out a bit. Um, I just felt like I really wanted to, I had this urge to just go and paint. I had this urge to, I don't know, I can't, it's really hard to describe actually, but you know, it's just something inside of you that just kind of is rumbling and, and is kind of just asking you, come on, you've got to follow this, you've got to follow this. And I think I spent a lot more time taking my time outside and um, kind of observing, observing things more and um, 
yeah, just getting back into just drawing and painting again. And I found that it was giving me so much joy that I thought I really want to do more of this. How can I, you know, how can I do more of this every day? And, and how can I kind of shift, you know, from away from my job at the time into something that would, you know, give me that, that joy all the time, every day, really. So, wow. yeah. How did you make that shift? Like, what was that like? Was it something that you just made a decision and you just were like done or did you transition? Uh, I transitioned. Yeah. yeah, I transitioned. I kind of felt that um, I put together what I call a happy plan. <laughs> so it kind of I like, like that. Yeah. Ideas a happy plan. Of, you know, things that I wanted to do more of. So it was things like go on art retreats and uh, connect with other creative people, follow some artists, get inspired um so that kind of that's kind of where that started and then I just I really just saved I put money away so you know when I was ready to kind of make that jump I had kind of like a cushion and I could just explore and try all these different things without feeling that sense of urgency which I think sometimes you might feel when you kind of make a change like that yeah Yeah. and I appreciate you sharing that with us because I was um this is something that I've been hearing from other people I've been interviewing. And I think it's really valuable to, to, to kind of hear these stories about how you transitioned into it because it can feel very, I think a little daunting of like, how do I really step fully into my creative life? How do I make that work for me as a way to, you know, way to support myself and what I'm hearing is, and I like this is that, you know, it's not an abrupt change. It is like make a plan and make steps and say, put money and save, you know, do these things so that you're really taking care of yourself and standing up for what you, what really brings you joy at the same time. So it's kind of not putting pressure on yourself as well. I think that was really important for me that, you know, this is something I wanted to do more of. So I just made sure that I put time in my schedule every day to do something more creative. So even though I was working and doing something that maybe, you know, I didn't really want to be doing in the next five or 10 years, you know, I really made sure that I, um, you know, carved out the time to be creative every day. And I think that really helped. Yeah. I think that's also, that's really important. Like, you know, making room for that in your life and, and showing up for it so that it gets grounded and can become, it can grow into something more substantial. So love that. Well, um, so now I really want to hear about, cause now you live in Spain and your <laughs> life there. I know. And it, and it's so like, you're just sitting in this gorgeous space oh and, <laughs> and on your, and, you know, people need to go look at Louise's website. Cause she's these beautiful pictures of like the, her view out of the window of her, of mm-hmm. her, um, of her home. And it's just looks idyllic. So you know, what's important to you? Like, tell me a little bit about how you ended up there. I'm kind of interested in that. And uh, well, it's, yeah, I kind of knew I was, I was in New York and I knew I was ready to leave. I kind of had that feeling of, I don't really want this kind of life anymore. Even though I'd left my job and I'd kind of been leading a creative life for probably a year or so. Um, and I had a friend that lives in Spain and they invited me over and um, I got to know the place and there was a lot of, there was a lot of serendipity kind of meetings and moments that happened and then um, an opportunity came up for me to to buy a place here so I was like okay oh, <laughs> and there was, there was lots, I mean there's lots and lots of twists and turns it wasn't just as easy as that of course but um, yeah and I kind of it was just the right thing to do and what's so funny is you know I'm a big kind of vision boarder as well I do a lot of, I've been doing a lot of vision boarding probably almost 10 years now and it was so funny that when I look back on my vision boards, all of them had like a life by the sea and Spain popped up a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's really interesting kind of, it's almost like I kind of knew inside that I was going to live here at some stage. And um, when I was in my twenties, actually, I did visit Spain for a holiday. And I I do remember standing on top of this hill one day and saying, I'm going to live in Spain one day. But obviously at the time I was like, this is, that's silly. How would you ever live in Spain? <laughs> but it's so funny. I've obviously planted the seed all those years ago. And then for some reason it kept coming up in my vision boards. Well, and then this opportunity came up and yeah, I moved. So I kind of, I bought my place in September, 2012. And then I moved here February, 2013. Wow. So that was quite fast. Yeah, it was quite a fast turnaround. And when I came here in the August, I had no idea that I was going to purchase a place. I was just here on holiday and it kind of, 
yeah, it happened. Yeah. I, just, I just love the, the lifestyle and being close to the beach and just being close to nature and just the relaxed feeling that I have, you know, being here. That's compared to New York, <laughs> which obviously is like well, opposite. yeah, big change <laughs> for New York for sure. Yeah. <laughs> And, and I just love, I love stories like this because, you know, where you just are kind of following, I kind of think of it like following the breadcrumbs, like you just sort of like you went to take the trip and you visited and then these things unfolded and then you followed that. And then lo and behold, here you are living in your vision board, which is the power of vision boards, you know, is that, you know, you're grounding, you're, you're taking some sort of action. You're like building that vision in a way and you do it in that small way. And it does kind of show up in your life. I think it's often, it's, don't you find that it's common to kind of almost be surprised when you're looking at your life and then you find the vision board later and you're like, oh my God, I can't believe that. I yeah. It is amazing. Cause I used to do them on a monthly basis as well with the new moon. So I had like, I've got, I've got loads. I've got like a big massive stash of them. And yeah, it's really nice. I really want to frame them all actually frame them and put them on the wall because I think oh, um, yeah. they're constant reminders of, of, of things that have come to fruition but also i think i tr i truly believe there's other things on boards that maybe haven't you know it's quite the time it's not quite right yet that are still there and, and obviously having that visual representation is um really powerful for us to see that every day i think it is and that's amazing yeah i love yeah. vision boards. Right? i yeah i love them too that i love and i love that story oh, so so now you're in Spain. So, and it's this, and it's this beautiful place. Um, what's so, what was so important to you about being kind of close? You talk about being close to the sea, being in nature, spending time there every day. Like, I think that sounds like that was important to you. Yeah, it was. And actually one of the things was, um, I mean, I guess one of the main reasons I left New York as well is that I started to become a little bit, um, kind of I wouldn't say unwell but I think I was finding just all the just being with technology so much mm -hmm. was, um kind of tipping me out of balance I guess or just making me feel a little bit unbalanced I guess that's maybe that's the right word mm -hmm. so yeah so I kind of um I found that um I couldn't spend too much time on the computer and I got rid of my mobile phone my cell phone my mobile phone um and I kind of worked out that I was a little bit what you call electric sensitive. And I think there's a lot of people that feel that way as well. They probably don't actually realize it because I actually did a lot of research on it because I couldn't work out why I was feeling this way. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so one of the main reasons I did move was to actually get out of kind of like that sea of Wi-Fi and, and, and technology signals and things like that. And, um, and to spend time in nature every day because there's a, you know, the whole grounding philosophy that's out there as well, like earthing, it's called earthing, I think as yeah, well. Earthing. I know, I've heard of this. I know, I mean, I, I know what you're talking about, but maybe tell us a little bit about it because everybody may not know what you're talking yeah, about. So, yeah, so um, there's a lot of studies that have been made around, um, you know, going barefoot. So going barefoot in the sand, on the earth, in grass, um, just touching your bare feet in the ground has a lot of healing qualities. And what it actually does, it kind of, puts you in resonance with with mother earth so um, the earth has kind of like a vibration or a resonance um, that it kind of vibrates at and that's really kind of like our natural resonance as well so it's kind of like when we feel like we're out of balance when we're connected to nature or we're connected to the earth more it brings us back into balance mm. so um, it was funny because I would when I first moved here I would walk on the beach with my bare feet and I would just like instantly just feel so much better. And it was just like this whole overwhelming feeling that I had for probably six months actually, as I was kind of trying to work out what was going on. And um, I did a lot of research around it as well and, and kind of, yeah, that's kind of how I really understood the power of being in nature. And everybody, I think everybody can probably agree as well. Like, you know, when you're in nature, when you're at the beach on holiday or you're in the countryside, mm -hmm. climbing a mountain or wherever you might be, <laughs> you know, you have that, this feeling of, I don't know what it is. It's kind of just like this, this peaceful, tranquil, grounded feeling. Yeah. And I think we, we don't realize that what we're doing, we're picking up that energy from the earth. That's kind of healing us as well at the same time as balancing us as well. So that's really kind of, that was like one of the main uh, yeah. reasons. I kind of just felt this urge to be nearer, mm -hmm. nearer nature. And then when I did more research, I understood this was 
kind of what was going on. So even today, you know, I, I do work on the computer, but I don't have Wi-Fi in my house. I have a, a cabled internet um, and I make sure I don't spend too much time on the computer and I'm down the beach most mornings or I try and put my bare foot bare feet in the ground if I can if it's not too cold in the winter <laughs> right yeah yeah but um yeah or hug a tree you can go and hug a tree <laughs> That's so I saw an article on that recently I was like yeah <laughs> it's true I mean that is a message that I'm hearing and some of the, a lot of the interviews that I'm doing and so we're all getting to hear this message and it's it's actually really powerful for me to hear it from so many different people how healing and cleansing and grounding. I mean, these are different words that I'm, but nature just keeps coming up again and again and again, that nature is so good for us. Like our souls are happy when we're connecting with, with the earth. And I think there's just many, many reasons why it's, you know, it's also really inspiring to so many creative souls. Like we are really inspired by nature and I know that that's one of your big inspirations. So I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about, like, I know you're one of your passions and some of the most beautiful work that you do and your books are about mandalas. So can you tell us a little bit about how you got started creating those, what, how those speak to you? Yeah. And I think, I, well, I guess, you know, like I said earlier, like I've always kind of been drawn to drawing kind of patterns, like circular patterns. And I didn't really know why, <laughs> But it wasn't really until I guess I moved here um, maybe five years ago that I was more consciously creating mandalas. So when I would take my walks on the beach, I'd take my journal with me um, and sometimes I'd be like doodling little designs when I'm on the beach. Um, and also when I first moved here, I didn't actually have a proper art studio and I had no art supplies either. So when I was out walking, I found myself kind of picking up all the different things from the beach so it could be like pieces of wood it could be leaves it, it could be shells stones and that beach is amazing like different times of the year you find different different like treasures and um what i would do i would collect and then i'd actually find myself sitting in the sand and just creating these little kind of found object mandalas and it was just like this just natural it was almost like a meditation i think and that's how i really i, I think creating a mandala is a meditation. Yeah. You know, if people feel like they can't actually meditate in terms of the traditional meditation, you know, with closing your eyes and listening to a guided meditation, this is a perfect way to actually calm the mind and, you know, become more tranquil and, and kind of connect with yourself a little bit more. So that's mm -hmm. what I was doing. You know, I was sort of like creating mandalas on the beach and then I would doodle them in my journal as well. And then I just started creating more and more of them in my studio I just felt this urge to kind of just create these circular designs yeah so that's that's how that started yeah and I, I, I ran a couple of um, online classes around you know creating mandalas and helping other people kind of understand how to create them mm -hmm. and um, what the benefits are because I think when people see these designs they sometimes feel like oh my goodness I could never create anything like that but I think once you know the kind of, once you know how to create the framework and the steps, mm -hmm. creating one, then everyone, everyone can create a mandala. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's really, I agree. It is like really fun and really meditative. And, um, and I know your book that you have the, tell me the title of your book. I, I don't have it written down right in front of me, but you've got a book that's coming out there about yeah, mandalas. Um, it's called Botanical Mandalas and it's, let me see if I get this right, <laughs> draw, paint, create, expressive, mandala art inspired by nature. Beautiful. So, it's taking, um, so it is taking kind of like that traditional mandala framework of a circular design, but it's actually kind of, um, the book is more around being con more connected with nature and then um, using kind of little bud motifs or leaf motifs or flowers to actually create that mandala design. Beautiful. Um, so many different motifs you can use in mandala designs. So the book is really primarily about, you know, using nature to create botanical mandalas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's beautiful. And you said something earlier about like the benefits of this and like why this is sort of like actually, you know, you talked about it being meditative, but like, could you elaborate a little bit more on that? Like what is, 
you know, what do you feel like people take away or can gain from really working in this particular way creatively? I think, I mean, absolutely the first thing, I think it's just the sense of that calm feeling that you have when you start creating one. I think there's something really sacred about the circle as well. And I think we all know that, but we don't know why. I think we just know that there's something just so magical when you kind of start even just doodling and, and, you, and you see this, this design grow. And I think it's one of the things as well is that I think when people are thinking about being creative, they really focus on what the end result would be like. So, and I do it sometimes as well. So when I'm thinking about you know, creating a painting, I'm kind of already thinking what, what it might look like. But I think it's really important as creative people for us to kind of just trust the process of creating. And I think that's what mandalas really do. It helps us kind of be more in the moment and maybe let go of what the end result would be and let us kind of like just trust what we're creating without really thinking too much about it. I love, yeah, yeah, because it because they do, and actually, people have an opportunity. Uh, you, your free gift is an invitation to join a class, right? For them to actually have this experience, so you can you can actually do this. Louise will guide you through it. But my ex, my experience with um, with that is what you're saying is like you're not really planning out how it's going to be. It sort of starts in the center, and you and you're like working organically out from that is that yeah that's I mean that's really kind of you know the, in the in in my book I do have I have lots of tutorials um <clears throat> like step so step by step so obviously people are going to see what the end result is going to be and I'm going to take them through the step by step process but I think you know that's an important part of the process so everyone understands kind of how you build the framework and how you can put everything together and then after that you know people will just be able to just design their own amazing kind of just mandalas or you know botanical mandalas as well so um and be able to incorporate their own kind of unique uh, designs so i think that's something that i think is really important as well to me is that um you know we all see things in such different ways as well so you know somebody might pick up a flower that's the same as the flower that i've picked up but we might look at it in different ways we might sketch it in different ways we might see colors in different ways so i kind of like to also talk about you know how it's so unique to you as well you know you, everyone has their favorite flower um so you know people can really start to really immerse themselves in this process when they start looking at what's around them as well what kind of flowers and um things that are around you know in their own environment and then kind of incorporate that into their own kind of unique designs as yeah. well so uh, yeah there's, there's yeah. so much, there's so much inspiration out there. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it, yeah. Like, so really it's, you you can create this groundwork and then it's like the sky's the limit. I mean, there really is no limit on like what could be created out of that. Um, so it sounds like a really good, you know, almost like a, almost like a practice of kind of keeping the flow of your creative ideas going too. like, even if you weren't going to be like a mandala artist, but to use it as a practice to just stay in that space of being open and like, I wonder what could drop in today or I don't know. Do you use it in that way at all for yourself? Yeah. I mean, at the moment I'm drawing a lot of, um, a lot of motifs, which I then incorporate into my design. So you know, I'm kind of like building up what I like to call like an inspiration deck or an insp like it's kind of an inspiration sketchbook as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I've been working on the hundred, you know, the hundred day project that a lot of people work on. Yeah. yeah. So do like a hundred days of botanical motifs. And that's just kind of like for me to just have like a deck of inspiration, um, that I might want to draw from. But again, you know, that's a really great daily practice because even though I might not be creating a mandala every day, I'm kind of, I'm still creating something that I've been inspired, you know, with, from nature and that I'll incorporate those into designs as well. So, you know, even if people don't feel the urge to create a mandala every day or create their own like really huge mandala, they, there's lots of different things they can be doing, just sketching flowers and looking at flowers in different ways. Um, in the book and, and in the class, I talk a lot about, you know, looking at a flower like from above turning it over, looking at it from the side. 
So from one single flower, you can have in so much inspiration just for one design. Mm -hmm. So it's just endless. I mean, nature's like just abundant with, with inspiration. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. And it, it, speaking of the hundred day project or, you know, I feel like this is also like really valuable if you're trying to kind of create space in your life for your creativity. Like sometimes we don't have, we don't always have like, you know, Oh, I have whole days that I can spend in my studio or I have like, you know, hours and hours to do stuff, but you can sit down and do these in pretty short periods of time. So it's a way of like just committing and getting consistently showing up for your creative life. Um, even if you don't have time to spend, you know, in your studio for ever. Oh, yeah. I completely agree. And I think that, I think that's the other thing as well is that, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm guilty of it too. It's like, we think, you know, I can't, I can't do anything today because I need to have at least two hours, <laughs> but no, 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 no. Cause I go down the beach in the morning and this morning I picked up, you know, all these leaves that were just the most amazing leaves that have just been falling from the trees. And, um, and I was just down there for 15 minutes, I think. And I, you know, pulled them back and straight away I've got, you know, all this inspiration in front of me that I can just draw from. So I just did some quick kind of just little line drawings and just for 10 minutes before I started, because I had a lot of work on today. So yeah. yeah. So I thought, you know what, that's my morning practice of just drawing and spending some time in nature and, you know, I can get some other work done and then I'll probably go back to it later on as well. But yeah, I think it's really important to carve out time every day. It really is. Yeah. And yeah. you don't have to carve out like huge chunks of time. Like it's yeah. 10 minutes. It's true. Like in this, it's like, I know when I was trying to find time, I did, I started doing something like this and it was, it really transformed. Like all of a sudden I felt like, well, now I'm being an artist every day. You know, I'm not just wanting to be an artist, but I'm actually being it because I'm doing something creative every day. And it, and sometimes it was just 10 minutes, but it was still worthwhile to spend the 10 minutes. So, you know, I, I think this is, yeah. Isn't it? I think sometimes it's kind of just feeling like just doing something every day. It's just that you're, you are moving forward. You're moving forward and you're, you're feeding your creative soul as well. You know, you're feeding that, that great energy that you get when you are being creative, that sometimes you can go off on a different zone. So you might be thinking I'll do 10 minutes, but it's like three hours later. Well, and that does happen too, but that's actually <laughs> like kind of a wonderful thing when that happens because you've opened up something, right? Like you've tapped into something and, and now you, you've really like, you know, sometimes that's what we need is like a, a practice, like creating a mandala, something that will just kind of prime the pump is sort of what I think of, like where you get into it. Cause I think that's also, that does happen for, for creatives that, that sort of fear of the blank page, like, uh, you know, maybe you do have big stretch of time and you're just staring at the, at the blank canvas or the blank page going, I don't even know what to, what, where to begin. So you know, do you ever have, have you ever had that experience? Oh yeah, yeah. when I have, I um, I painted a whole you know, big canvas series. I'm I'm going to paint a new one as well, with, which is going to be more uh, botanical mandalas. But yeah, it's like that whole blank, that blank canvas. So all I do, I just put on some music and I just get my paints out and I just just you just cover that white space, cover that white space straight away, and just have a and just play. And I think that's the best way to get started. Yeah. Um, because it's, it's a very daunting scene. <laughs> it can be. Yeah. I actually have, have a friend who is an artist who I always got really tickled about this. Um, every time he would start a new drawing or get a blank piece of paper, he would purposefully like just smudge it or put a mark on it or just do something somewhere randomly so that it wasn't perfect anymore and that he could just dive in and get started. And it was like his little way of getting past that, you know, I always thought that was funny and cute. No, that's, that's great. That's really great. Cause that, that's what it is. Cause we, you know, we want everything to be perfect, don't we? So that's, I think, I think that's part of the creative process as well is that letting go. It's that letting go of this is what it's going to be like. And, and yeah. And it, it can be a challenge. It can be a challenge, but I think, you know, with the, with mandalas as well, it's kind of, it's uh, the way that I create them. They're very organic anyway. So even though some of them do have a framework and a structure, um, you know, they're, they're very loose, very loose and everything. So, you know, I, I teach people both ways of approaching mm -hmm. how to create them as well. So if somebody wants to be a little bit more messier and a little bit more organic, 
I kind of go through that process and then um, in the book and then I have um, other frameworks. So people that really love that structure, I have the more kind of structural ones as well because we're all different how we want to create as well. So it's kind of like, um, yeah, there's a lot of mixture of different tutorials and, and fun exercises. That's beautiful. Can you tell us a little bit more about, you know, you were talking about just what got you started, like the connection with nature, that there was a little bit of like kind of healing for yourself or clearing, getting like, what do you, do you find that this is still really a healing process for you? Could you talk a little bit more about that, that healing process and how, what other people could actually get out of that process? Yeah, I, th I mean, absolutely. I think it's, it's constant, to be honest. I think, you know, especially now in our busy lives, everyone's so connected with technology you know, everyone's got a phone or we, you know, iPads or, you know, computers, there's technology all around us. So I think, you know, more than ever, we really need to be spending time in nature. So I think it's, it is an ongoing process of healing. And I feel like it's something I really do need to do every day. And if, if something happens and I miss a day, I really notice because I start getting a funny buzzy, like me personally, I start getting like a funny buzzy feeling inside of me. So I think, you know, I guess, for, for other people, it's probably just thinking about, and it, I think a lot of it goes back to childhood as well. It's like thinking about those times when you were a child and, you know, you would go out for picnics in the countryside or you go on holidays with your parents or with, with friends and like just reconnecting with that joyful feeling that you can remember. And it's kind of like thinking about how can I invite that in to my daily life? You know, even if you're somebody who works you know, a 12 hour day or something in a corporate job or has children and, and is juggling so many different things. There might be ways that you can ensure that you spend time in nature just to kind of get that balance back again. I mean, there's lots of parks in cities now and, um, you know, I think there's lots of different ways that you can kind of reconnect to nature, even just bringing bouquets of flowers into your home. That's yeah. a great way too. Like if you pass a florist on the way home, um, or even at the weekends going out with your family, just spending, you know, half an hour going to a park or something. I think, you know, once you start incorporating that into your day or into your week, then you can start seeing the benefits of it. And, and it'd be lovely just to, yeah, for more people to reconnect and, and kind of remember really just remember how great it is to be in nature. I think we all know, we all know, we all know. <laughs> mm -hmm. But we forget, we do get busy and we forget to make a, a point. Well, and that's what I love about what your, your process and what you're sharing here is that, because it sounds like you still actually commit to this process. Like you still get out of the, do you still collect like, you know, found objects and do you still make your little mandalas on the beach or do you bring the, the stuff in and do it more on your, in your. Yeah, I do it sketchbook? more. Um, sometimes I do if there's like stones or shells I'll go on the beach and I'll create something but um, this morning I picked up a lot of leaves I'll just show you actually they're really uh, they're kind of they're so interesting they're just like really I don't know if you can see them but they're just oh they're so beautiful aren't they? they're just amazing they're really interesting I've never seen a leaf like yeah. that like the with the centers uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like they I mean, they're just wonderful shapes, but also for like just watercolor sketches. Mm -hmm. um, and it was raining. It was it had been raining this morning, so they're all a bit wet. So you know, normally I'd be like, oh, I'm going to create a little leaf mandala, um, but no, I bring them back here and do something with them. Yeah. So it's not every day that I'll uh, I'll create the actual objects on the beach. But yeah, I, I go down and collect. I go down and collect a lot of things. So yeah, my studio is full of. <laughs> Sorts of things. <laughs> yeah like you have a little like your nature table with all your your things that you're gathering yeah, yeah I, 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 need those, I need one of those big cabinets you know those big cabinets that that you have like the curio I think they're called curiosity yes yeah, yeah. drawers and they have these little compartments and you can pull the drawers out that's what I need one of those I'm going to ask the universe for one of those I think you could put that on your vision board. <laughs> I will, yeah, I will. Because kind of, I've got so many, and I don't, you know, I wouldn't want to throw those away. I want to keep those forever, you know, so I need to try and preserve them. And mm -hmm. I do a lot of flower pressing as well. So, you know, I do preserve a lot of the things that I pick up and, and stuff as well. So, yeah. Well, I, I love this practice too, because this is what's just occurring to me as well, that this is also really valuable for 
kind of developing your own authentic creative voice because I mean we all like you were saying like we all get inspiration maybe you even when several people could look at the same flower but they're not going to you know, the way you would see it, what would jump out to you, how you would draw that, like that's part of the authentic self-expression. Yeah. The, and this process, it sounds like it can really support you in discovering that because it really is like a, a process of self-discovery of, of through nature, like noticing, because what you're noticing might not be the same thing that I would notice. What you would pick up on the beach might not be the same thing I would pick up on the beach. And there's reasons for that that we may not even fully understand but it it feels like this this could be like super supportive in cultivating our own identity as creative souls like how who, what what our voice is how we interpret things um like through the through just playfulness and, and having fun and being out in the world and in nature and I think it's like just the process of inquiry as well. I think that's something that, you know, when you, when you kind of really start taking time to look at something, then it's kind of that, that pro is that inquiry process of, Oh, look at, Oh, I didn't realize, look how many petals it has. Oh, it is kind of like a shape of five, not three. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of that kind of, and I think, you know, I, I kind of talk a little bit about that in the, in the free gift that I'm offering just to help people get started with looking at just one single flower in such a different way. So hopefully that would kind of inspire people to kind of actually look at a daisy and then start looking at it. It's not just a daisy, you know, there's lots of different ways of, of looking at that flower and then how can I draw that and how can I then incorporate that into maybe their own mandala designs or even just in their sketchbook. Um, Cause I do a lot of a sketchbook practice as well, just um, kind of like drawing out shapes and colors and things. Yeah, so it's yeah. Well, I love this too, because it, you know, it's like a mindfulness. Pri I mean, it sounds like it's, you know, looking past like the things that we might just see on the surface and like really, really getting in touch with or really observing like at a deeper level. So there's like a kind of muscle that's getting exercised with that. And it's oh, yeah. beautiful, like what we can create. Cause there's so much, if you do just look at little things in nature, I don't, you know, and, and we did this stuff, I think naturally when we were children and we kind of lose we did, ability, yeah. we, we forget to do it. We get busy. We start zipping by. Even when you were just holding up those leaves, which they were so beautiful, you're holding them up and you know, I'm not sure I would have noticed that if I'd just been like on my way down the street, but you're, you know, you're picking these things up and really like paying yeah. closer attention to, to <laughs> them. everyone walking past me. Cause it's actually on the, uh, where I live, there's a, um, a new path that's been built and that's where I was walking along. And there's all these people kind of, there's a few people walking their dogs. There's a cyclist, you know, somebody on a power walk or something. And there's me like, <laughs> there's me on the <laughs> Ooh, ooh, like putting everything in my pocket and it's like what's she doing <laughs> She's a I, bit old. that's wonderful though like we you know that's wonderful we all need to do this more yeah. because we miss things like we're just missing stuff when we don't yeah. take the time to look at this stuff more closely no, but i think you know i think it's just i think it's a great way of just getting to know your own kind of environment as well like you know everyone's got i don't know maybe a garden or a park or somewhere they can go and it, you'll be surprised when you actually start looking what you can actually find because even for me here you know i'm like oh i didn't see that flower yesterday you know it, it, you kind of notice different things and um and then i also i i was very fortunate enough to spend time in bali last year and um when i came back i created a lot of work that was inspired by all the flora and everything from bali as well so it's kind of like i like to use it as a a come kind of like a what's the right word it's like a memory kind of like just a you know the joyful I had joyful time I had in Bali and this is I've got the mandala here actually I can show you quickly oh please I that was um, oh how that's beautiful what I created. Yeah, that's inspired by all the things like so for me when I was creating this I was thinking about my time in Bali mm -hmm. and then it's kind of like now whenever I look at this it's on my wall in my studio and this is one of the projects in the book actually it's, um, it just reminds me of the time I spent in Bali and the lovely, um, you know, the, like the floating flower fountains that they put together there, which are mandalas. Yeah, so it's kind of like, there's so many things you can do with this work. Um, 
you know, if people have, you know, childhood memories of being in a particular country or something, you know, they can, they can probably tap back into that memory by creating a mandala, maybe from a particular berry or something from, you know, where they visited that they can't get in their local area. So I think, you know, there's so many, so many, um, yeah, mindful kind of meditative and memory jogging things, I think, that can be part of this process as well that I love. That's something I love. I'm like, oh, you know, I love my barley flowers. (laughs) I do too. I love that. I really think that's, yeah, it's like, some people might journal and you've got, it's kind of like the picture's worth a thousand words. You know, yeah. you've got all of the essence of that sort of captured in that beautiful Actually, mandala that you created. Yeah. It's yeah. Kind of just, it just captures that, that place and, and the feeling I had while I was there as well. So I think, you know, it's, and I really want to do a, a big, a whole series on just those and just all of the flowers and fauna and everything and the colors um, that I kind of, I soaked up while I was there. Yeah. 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 Oh, I love that. Well, Louise, would you tell us that I know, I think everybody's going to probably be really excited to go and like start drawing mandalas now after we've been talking about this. Do you want to tell oh, them? Sorry. Yes, sorry. I, love it. I want to. <laughs> um, do you want to tell everybody about your beautiful, like free, your free gift that you're offering? Sure. sure. Uh, so, um, so yeah, the free gift is, is a free online class. So I take you through, it takes an hour, the class is an hour long and um, it's self-paced so you can stop and start as many times as you like. And I take you through the process of looking at a flower, sketching it in different ways to kind of um, create your own motifs. And then I talk you through how to actually create a framework for a mandala design. And then you can watch me take my motifs I've created and draw out the mandala design and then I paint it as well with watercolor so um, you know the class is designed really just to you know you can follow along and you can essentially kind of be inspired by what you're seeing so you can create the same motifs if you want and the same mandala design but it's you know it's, it's really there to inspire you to kind of take a flower that you love and um, go through the same process so that's my free gift um, but also in addition to that, I have, a, I do actually have a free, another free mandala class as well. So I make sure that that's included, um, okay. when people sign up too. So, you know, people can kind of do lots of different things. So there's yeah. lots, there's lots of mandala resources you can Wonderful. have. Now yeah, that's so generous. And I think that oh, will be God. a lot of fun. I'm going to have to check that out myself too. So <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today and for sharing your beautiful spirit and your beautiful space and work. Um, It's been a real pleasure, Louise. And I want to just say goodbye to everybody and I will see you again soon. Yes. Thank you so much, dear. Thank you. Thank you.